Hello students, welcome to TSET classes, welcome to the class on Indian Polity Constitution. As part of Indian Polity Constitution TSPSC Group 1 Prelim Series, today this is the final class on Indian Polity and Constitution. We have completed 14 classes on the Indian Polity and Constitution for group 1 prelims TSPSC for upcoming exam. Now in this class, we will see the last and the final important concept in Indian polity and that is your constitutional and non-constitutional bodies, constitutional and non-constitutional bodies. Now let me give you some background. See. Generally, these bodies or institutions, these bodies or institutions are divided into two types. These bodies or institutions, they are generally divided into two types. The first one is called constitutional bodies, and the second one being non-constitutional bodies, non-constitutional bodies. Constitutional bodies and non-constitutional bodies, we all know there are two types of institutions. Non-constitutional bodies are further divided into two types. The first one is statutory bodies. The first one is statutory bodies, the second one is non-statutory bodies, non-statutory bodies. Now coming to constitutional bodies, what is the meaning of a constitutional body? Any institution or any body which is established and derives their authority duties, functions directly from the constitution is called a constitutional body. Example, you have election commission of India, union public service commission, CAG, component auditor general of India, national commission for SC, national commission for ST, national commission for BC, all these are constitutional bodies. Every constitutional body has an article linked to that constitutional body. Like for example, article 324 talks about election commission of India, 315 deals with UPSC, 148 deals with CAG, article 338 Article 338A and Article 338B deals with SC, ST and BC Commission. So constitutional bodies derives their authority directly from the constitution. They are ind independent autonomous bodies, meaning these institutions came into force as when the constitution is formed and also it came into force and also they get the power directly from the constitution. The second thing we have is non-constitutional bodies. See before looking at what is this non-constitutional bodies and all, try to understand the difference between two types of non-constitutional bodies we have. The first one being statutory body, the second one being non-statutory body. If you look at the statutory bodies, statutory bodies are those bodies which derives their authority by a law. When any body is established by a law, when any institution is established by a law, it is called a statutory body. When any institution is established by an executive order or government order, 
and that is called your non statutory bodies. Statutory bodies are those bodies which are established by a law and derives their authority by that law. Non statutory body is that body which is established through a executive order of a ministry, government executive order, government order. Examples are for statutory bodies National Human Rights Commission, Central Information Commission, presently Central Vigilance Commission, National Commission for Women, National Commission for Minorities, all these are the statutory bodies. Coming to non statutory bodies. Few examples of non statutory bodies are Niti Ayog. Niti Ayog. Niti Ayog stands for National Institute for Transforming India. That is a non statutory body. CBI. CBI is a non statutory body. So, these bodies are important. So, in India, institutions are divided into two types constitutional non-constitutional and this constitutional bodies are those bodies which derive their authority directly from the constitution. Non-constitutional bodies are divided into two types. One is a statutory status bodies or uh, a body established by a law or a non-statutory body, a body which is established by an executive order. Now to continue this class, let us see some important objective type questions from this topic expected for our TSPSC group 1 upcoming prelims. So, let us start the first question. Look at the first question. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Correct statement. See, I am telling you again the main intention why we are coming up with these classes is because of two reasons. One, we want you to understand how a question will be framed from some particular topics. Two, you can also guess what type of questions will come. This is our two intention. Apart from these two, of course, we want you to uh, learn the subject, know the subject, understand the subject is our primary motive. So, let us look at the question number 1. Article 315 deals with Union Public Service Commission. Article 315 deals with Union Public Service Commission, State Public Service Commission and Joint Public Service Commission. Statement number 2, Joint Public Service Commission is a constitutional body. Now, look at this, very, very important for the exam. The answer for this is, one is correct, the second one is wrong. I will tell you why. Of course, yes. Article 315 of the constitution talks about three things. Union Public Service Commission, State Public Service Commission. These two bodies are constitutional bodies, these two are the constitutional bodies to be established as per article 315. This is clear. Now, there is one more institutional setup as per article 315 and that is your joint public service commission. Now, coming to joint public service commission. Now, Joint Public Service Commission is that commission which is established for two states. When one commission is established for two states or more than two states, that is called Joint Public Service Commission. Now, please understand this very, very carefully. According to Article 315 of the Constitution, Parliament may by law, Parliament may by a law as the authority to establish a joint public service commission. When any law is established as per a law, that body will become non-constitutional body and as part of non-constitutional non body, this is a 
statutory body. This is a statutory body that is a main. So, of course, Article 315 talks about Joint Public Service Commission, but Joint Public Service Commission is not a constitutional body, it is a statutory body established by a law. Remember this for your exam, very, very important. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. The strength of the members of the election commission is decided by president. The members of the election commission of India are appointed by the president. The members of the election commission of India are removed following the process to remove the judge of the Supreme Court. All the statements are correct. All the statements are correct. Let me explain this for you. Article 324 talks about election commission of India. Article 324 says, Article 324 says, the election commission of India consists of an election commissioner and such other commissioners as decided by the president. The article 324 says, the election commission of India consists of one chief election commissioner and other commissioners as decided by the president. As on today, there is one chief election commissioner and two other commissioners, total three. So, the first statement is correct. All these three commissioners, one chief election commissioners and other two are appointed by president as per article 324, absolutely correct. Now look at the third point, very, very important. According to Article 324, an election commissioner can be removed only following the process to remove the judge of the Supreme Court. That is, the removal of the judge of the Supreme Court is mentioned in Article 124, Clause 4 and 124, Clause 5. Article 124 clause 4 and 124 clause 5 talks about the procedure for removal of the judges of the Supreme Court. The same procedure is applied for the removal of the election commissioners in India. Very, very important. An election commissioner receives a salary as par with the judge of the Supreme Court only. Remember this also. So, Article 324 talks about election commission of India. This is part of part 15. This is part 15 of the constitution. Part 15 of the constitution deals with elections from article 324 to 329. Two articles are very, very important. One is article 324. The second one is article 326. 324 talks about election commission of India. 326 right to vote on the basis of universal adult franchise. That is your question related to election commission. Let us go to the next question. Look at the next question, very, very important again. Which article, this is a very factual based question, but important. Which article of the constitution deals with special officers for? linguistic officer or special linguistic officer it is called special linguistic officer okay 351 350 capital a 350 capital b 315 one option you can eliminate from this is 315 because article 315 talks about union public service commission state public service commission Joint Public Service Commission. So, you can eliminate that. Now, Article 351. Now, what is Article 351? According to Article 351, it says, the center shall send the directions, the center shall send the directions for development of 
in the language the center shall send directions to the state for the development of hindi language for the development of hindi language center has to send the directions to the state that is 351 so this is also not there now coming to 350 capital a now try to understand now what is article 350 capital a it says the state shall take steps in providing primary education in mother tongue the state shall take steps in providing primary education in mother tongue that is article 350a so this is also a wrong answer so only one option left so what is that answer is 350b now look at this article 350 capital b is not part of the original constitution this article is added by 7th Constitutional Amendment Act 1956. This article is added by 7th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1956. According to this, the President of India shall appoint a special linguistic officer to look into the interest of linguistic based minorities in India to safeguard the linguistic minorities in the country. See minorities in the constitution are divided into two types. One, culture that is religion based minorities. Two, language based minorities. Religion based minorities and language based minorities. So very, very important for the exam. Try to know answer is 350B. So, 350B is not part of the original constitution. It was added later on by 7th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1956. 7th Constitutional Amendment Act 1956. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. The term of the term, the term of the Attorney General is 5 years as per Article 76. Attorney General has the right to participate in the proceedings of any house of the parliament except the right to vote. Very easy question. Answer is B. This is wrong because look at this. Attorney General, Advocate General. Okay. Article 76 talks about Attorney General. Article 165 talks about Advocate General. Okay. President of India appoint Attorney General, Governor appoint Advocate General. President of India can remove the Attorney General anytime. Governor can remove the Advocate General anytime. Remember this now. Meaning, there is no fixed term. There is no fixed term for Attorney General. The next one is very important. Attorney General can participate in the proceedings of proceedings of Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, or joint sitting of Parliament, but cannot vote. But cannot vote. No right to vote. Similarly, even the Advocate General can participate in the proceedings of Assembly, Council. There is no joint sitting in the state legislature, so only assembly and council. But he cannot vote, he cannot vote. This is a special power given to him. This is a very special power given to him. So, answer is B. Okay. Very important and very easy as well. Who is Attorney General of the country? Attorney General is the first law officer of the country. He is the first legal officer of the country. Attorney General is the legal representative of the central government. Advocate General is the legal representative of the state government. Which article deals with National Commission for Backward Classes? See, ba National Commission for Backward Classes was established in 1992 as per the recommendations of Indira Savani case of 1992. 
Supreme Court said there should be one institution to safeguard the interest of the BCs in India. So, as per the recommendations given by Indra Savani case, in 1992, National Commission for Backward Classes was formed. When National Commission was Backward Classes was formed, this was a statutory body. This was a statutory body. Now, in 2018, in 2018, 102nd Constitution Amendment Act has made National Commission for Backward Classes a constitutional body. Made this uh, constitutional body. Now, whenever there is a constitutional body, there should be an article, right? So, 102nd Constitutional Amendment Act 2018 has added Article 338 B to the Constitution. 338 National Commission for ESC, National Commission for EST, National Commission for BC. Now, what is Article 335 important? Claims of SCs and STs in government jobs. In government jobs. Claims of the SCs and STs in government jobs. So, this is Article 335. Okay. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. COG. COG stands for Comploder and Auditor General of India. And Auditor General of India. COG stands for Comploder and Auditor General of India. CAG advises the president with regards to the prescription of the form in which the accounts of the center and state shall be kept. Absolutely correct statement. Article 148 to 151 talks about CAG. CAG is an authority which is established, a constitutional authority which is established to Audit the expenses of the government. Which government? Central government, state government, also local government. CAG has the authority to audit the expenses of any government in this country. CAG can also prescribe to the President of India on how the accounts shall be maintained. CAG report is studied again by Public Accounts Committee in the Parliament. The Public Accounts Committee do a post-mortem on CAG report. See how beautiful this is. So only the head of the Public Accounts Committee as per tradition will be the opposition party member. The opposition party leader will be the chairman of this Public Accounts Committee who post mortem the audit report done by CAG on the expenses of the central and state government. The beauty of democracy. Hmm? CAG is part of part 5 of the constitution. Correct? Part 5 only. Part 5, article 52 to 151. So, answer is C. Both the statements are correct. Absolutely correct. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Consider the following and choose the correct statement. Article 279, capital A, deals with GST Council. Correct, am I absolutely correct? Added by 101st Constitution Amendment Act 2016. And this came into force on 1st July 2017. 101st Constitutional Amendment Act. GST Council is established by an order made by the President. This is also correct. Absolutely correct. See, GST Council is in news. What is the composition of GST Council? One, Finance Minister, Central Finance Minister, Ministry of State for Finance, Central Ministry of State for Finance. Three. Now, this is important for the exam. Finance Minister of the States or, or any other ministers. 
any other ministers any other ministers there is no problem now can anyone tell me what is the role of the gst council very very important gst council take the take into consideration the slabs of the gst they decide the rates of the gst they decide which items to be excluded which items to be included and etc so gst council consists of these people with a voting share of one third for the center and two third for the states the entire the entire you know the entire slab rates or maybe you have something called exclusion inclusion all will be decided by gst council gst council as per article 279 capital a is established by an order of the president of india is by established by an order of the president of india consider the following and choose the correct statement the vice chairman and ceo of niti aayog is appointed by the prime minister correct she is appointed by the government who is the head of the government pm and who is the chairman of the niti aayog the chairman of the niti aayog is prime minister niti aayog stands for national institute of for transforming india national institute for transforming india and niti aayog is established on 1st january 2015 replacing planning commission of india niti aayog is the research think tank of the country so vice chairman and ceo is established is appointed by prime minister this is correct Central Bureau of Investigation is a statutory body. Oh my God, this is wrong. I'll tell you why. Many of you, many of the people believe that it is a statutory body. This is wrong. Answer is A. Yeah. Now let's see something about the CBI. CBI is established in 1963 by an order, by an executive order of Ministry of Home Affairs. ministry of home affairs now point number 1 to be remembered cbi derives derives its authority very very important derives its authority from from delhi special police establishment act of 1946 cbi is not established as per this act CBI derives the authority, their functions from this act called Delhi Special Police Established Act of 1946. CBI is established by an order of the Ministry of Home Affairs in 1963. But second point to remember, this is important. Presently, presently, CBI is under Ministry of personal and public grievance now cbi is not under ministry of home affairs it was established as per this order but now cbi is under ministry of personal and public grievances remember this for your exam consider the following and choose the correct statement okay the term and tenure of the chairman of the national human rights commission is For five years or sixty-five years of age. Wrong statement. I'll tell you why. The term and tenure of the chairman of CVC is four years or sixty-five years of age. This is correct. Okay. Now look at this. First one is NHRC. National Human Rights Commission is a statutory body established in nineteen ninety-three. Okay. 
as per national human rights commission act of 1993 the chairman of the national human rights commission should be a retired supreme court judge or a supreme court judge now as per this equation imagine a, if a supreme court retired judge is appointed as a chairman of nhrc when will the supreme court judge retire he retires at the age of 65 years now how can you have 65 years of age for national human rights commission then so only according to this act the term and tenure is 5 years or 70 years of age which are is early which are is early now what is the next second one we have the term and tenure of the cvc now cvc cvc central vigilance commission is established in 1964 by an executive order now in 2003 this cvc has been given a statutory status a statutory status cvc ensures there is no corruption in the administration the term and tenure is 4 years or 65 years of age okay consider the following and choose the correct statement central information commission is established as per rta act of 2005 absolutely correct absolutely correct cbi is a main representative of international police from india this is also correct this is also absolutely correct so both the statements are correct now this is your indian polity and constitution series for tspsc group 1 i hope you all enjoyed the class as well all the very best for your exam keep learning happy learning thank you very much i'll see you again till then jai hind